Good day everyone, welcome to your 7th Roblox Lewis scripting tutorial. Today we're going to go over user input service. So there are several ways to get input from a user, a client. One of those ways is mouse.keydown slash mouse.keyup. The other is user input service. Uh, and the other is context action service. R right off the bat, I need to tell you guys, do not use mouse.keydown. It's deprecated, and there are several reasons why that is so. Deprecated means that Roblox no longer supports it in their code, like they don't update it. it they recommend for you not to use it in any new work. Uh, they made user input service and context action service for a reason. <clears throat> so never go with key down. You can't use all the, or you can't get all the keys with it. You can only use it for keyboards and not for mobile controls or gamepad controls. It's just bad. Don't use it. Uh, you'll be much be better off with user input service and context action service. So, user input service and context action service, what are the difference is between them? Context action service, it's mainly used for <clears throat> binding specific actions to different inputs, and it's specifically for that, while user input service, I guess you could say is for more general things, although you could uh, theoretically use it for some of the same things as context action service. Mm, for the most part, I always use user input service. Um, that's just me. I tried using context action service once, but it didn't work out for me because I needed some certain arguments from user input service events that I couldn't get with context action service. So I'm going to open up the wiki, user input service, context action service. <clears throat> so uh, we can see that context action service has a lot of functions <clears throat> because that's what it is, while user input service has a multitude of properties, functions, and events. So with user input service, you can also uh, sort of see what platform a user's on because you have the keyboard enabled properties uh, uh, whatever whatever enabled properties uh, touch enabled so you can sort of determine what platform a player is using based on these properties which can be useful for a variety of things <clears throat> um, just a lot of useful functions here that and events for miscellaneous things. <clears throat> what I'm going to get into now is uh, input began. That's uh, pretty much the main event of user input service. That and input ended, input changed. <clears throat> Fired when a user begins interacting via blah 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 device. Fired when a user stops interacting. Fired when the user changes how they're interacting. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, first thing you should know, uh, where is it, local script, context action service, user input service, should only ever be used in a local script. If you use it in a server script, that's not going to work, because input is local to your client. So it only makes sense you would use it in a local script <clears throat> and not in a server script. It just won't work that way. So, local UIS game get service user input service UIS dot input began connect function input GPE uh, game process event. So what these arguments are is a game processed event. Basically, that that um. If it is, if the player is, uh, for example, clicking on a GUI element or typing into a text box or typing into the Roblox chat, 
then game processed event is true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. <clears throat> so the reason we have that is if GPE then return, sorry, if game processed event then return end. I usually call it GPE for short. Uh, this is saying that basically if the user is, for example, typing in the Roblox chat, uh, otherwise, I mean, in other words, if GPE is true, then we're going to return and end. Uh, this might look like it makes a little more sense to you guys. <clears> that <throat> just basically stops it stops the function in its tracks so that it doesn't proceed any further so that for example uh, if you have a game that you press X, Z, C, whatever keys to use an ability or something <clears throat> we don't want those abilities to activate while the player is typing be typing out a sentence to their friend or whatever we don't want that so that's what game process event is uh, next the input uh, argument that is an input object this is a pretty cool object an object that describes a particular user input such as mouse movement touches keyboard and more they're created when an input begins the change event may fire as the user changes the input in question <clears throat> so the input object is an object all its own like it says it's client only just like user input service by the way, I'm going to make another video on Context Action Service next, just to show you guys how to use that, because it's also incredibly useful. Anyway, an input object, it has several properties. Uh, the user input state, state of the user's input. The value type is user input state. Uh, same name. Um, so there's begin, change, end, cancel, none. Print input dot user in input state. Print input dot user input type. Print input dot key code. Um, user input type. This is also pretty self-explanatory, I guess. The value type is a user input type, and <clears throat> here you have all the various enumerations enums of user input types you can check if it's a gamepad which gamepad it is if it's a keyboard if the user input type is touch if the mouse is moving if you're uh, moving the mouse wheel back and forth uh, mouse button one two or three I guess the middle mouse button is when you press down that uh that wheel text input that's also good uh, if user input if input dot user input type equals enum dot user input type dot keyboard then print oops woohoo uh, if user if input dot user input state equals enum dot user input state dot begin then print beginning uh, okay uh, there's also delta describing that <coughs> god uh, it feels great out but uh, I have a bit of a cold I guess vector 3 describing the delta between mouse joystick movements um, that's a vector 3 that's a uh, what could that be used for? That could be used for, uh, for example, in games like, uh, what's it called? Miner's Haven. I think that could be used for dragging objects around on a grid system or something. Uh, position could potentially be for something similar. Uh, from screen position of the... Huh. Okay. So this is for something similar ish uh, one use I could think of this is camera movement for example if you uh, if you had an over-the-shoulder camera or uh, 
a stationary camera and you wanted it to move based on where your mouse goes, you can maybe use that for that. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do that. I'm pressing all sorts of keys, blah, blah, blah. And you can see what's printing out here. Uh, enum dot user input state dot begin mouse button one. Now it's keyboard and key code F. Uh, key codes are also useful. Enum that describes what kind of input was used. For input types like keyboard, it describes what key was pressed. Mouse that provides no additional information. The value type is a key code. So this is all of the keys <coughs> on your keyboard <coughs> and more. I don't know what the world enums are. Uh, yeah, it has everything here, including uh, gamepad stuff, thumbsticks, d-pads, buttons, blah blah blah. Uh, if input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot x, then print do a cool magic ability. <clears throat> so this is probably the most basic use of user input service. You simply check if the user is pressing a certain key. In this case, enum dot key code x. You can change that to c to one to five to e whatever f9 I'm pressing e helps if input dot uh, user input type equals uh, enum dot user input type dot mouse button one and then print shoot something out where my mouse is. Uh, for some reason that also is printing when I uh, press down on my mouse button 2, my right mouse button, but that's actually something wrong with my mouse. It does that everywhere. So, yeah. Uh, what else? It also has a lot of good stuff for mobile. Uh, when I was talking earlier about how I couldn't use context action service for something, uh, I needed to use the touch tap event to get that array of touch positions that context action service would not give me because I needed to know where the user was tapping on the screen for some mo mobile controls. Uh, Uh, is key down, holding down a specified key, get keys pressed. Yeah, all, all of this has a lot of cool miscellaneous uses. I'm probably, I'm definitely, I think, going to be using user input service and context action service to make things in later videos with you guys. I think that's all I need to explain for today. If you guys have questions, you know, just shoot them in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video on Context Action Service.